Hi, I'm in Mahaca in the south of Spain, and I've come here to ride the 2014 version of BMW's R1200 RT. Four years after the R1200 RT was updated with BMW's twin overhead camshaft engine, this latest version of the Touring Boxer line goes a step further by adopting the partially liquid-cooled 1170cc power plant that was introduced in the R1200 GS a year ago. The RT motor has a few changes from the GS specification, notably the slightly higher gearing that allows more relaxed high-speed cruising, and a heavier alternator and crankshaft that are designed to give smoother running at low revs. Maximum output is unchanged at 125 horsepower, an increase of 15 horsepower over the air-cooled Boxer. The engine is just part of the R1200 RT's comprehensive redesign. The new screen's range of vertical adjustment is unchanged, but it's slightly wider, and lowering the seat by 20mm has effectively made the screen taller. Hands are well protected by the redesigned fairing. The mirrors are a bit smaller, and now show less of your hands and more of the view behind. The uprated headlight gives a shared family look with a six-cylinder K1600, and the new instrument panel incorporates a big colour display and onboard computer, controllable by the excellent click wheel on the left bar. The height adjustable seat is longer as well as lower for both rider and pillion. Shorter rides in particular will benefit from the lower triangle of seat bars and footrests, which make the bike a bit more manageable at slow speed. The flexible engine also helps to make the RT really easy to ride. A lot of time on quiet Spanish roads, I was cruising along between about 40 and 70 miles an hour in third or fourth gear, with the RT happy to pull effortlessly from well below 4,000 RPM. But it's when you ride a bit harder that this RT really comes alive, because the liquid-cooled Boxer has a stronger, more immediate throttle response, and notably more mid-range and top-end performance. That makes the BMW really fun to ride, and would also be useful when it's heavily loaded with a pillion or luggage. Like the GS, the RT comes with BMW's basic traction control system, which they call Automatic Stability Control. There's also a choice of riding modes, the standard road mode or rain, which gives a softer throttle response and unchanged maximum output. This top specification RT also has an extra mode called Dynamic, which sharpens throttle response further. So the RT is long-legged and efficient as you'd expect from those initials, and its chassis performance is also outstanding. My highlight of the launch was throwing the bike along a twisty road in the mountains and being amazed at how taut and sporty it felt, despite a substantial fueled up weight of 274 kilos, or just over 600 pounds. The tubular steel mainframe is new, with stiffer mountings for the telelever front and paralever rear suspension systems. This top spec model, called the LE in the UK, comes with Dynamic ESA, BMW's semi-active suspension system. This is connected to the riding modes, so changing between rain, road and dynamic automatically sets suspension damping to soft, medium or hard. The settings can be overridden using the button on the left bar, where you can also adjust the preload. It works brilliantly, managing to be supple when you're riding gently or on a bumpy road, and firm when you want it to be, for example by stiffening the fork damping under hard braking, or the shock damping under acceleration. The rest of the chassis is very good too. Braking is powerful thanks to an unchanged system featuring radial four-piston Brembo calipers biting 320mm discs up front with very efficient ABS. Detailing is as good as you'd expect of an RT. The unchanged 25-litre fuel capacity gives a range of over 200 miles and there are generously sized panniers as standard fitment with the option of central locking. The bike wouldn't be an RT without lots of accessories, some of which are included in this LE model. The test bike also had cruise control and a heated seat, plus the central locking and chromed exhaust. It also had gear shift assistant professional, which is basically a quick shifter. That worked well at speed, adding a blip of throttle and down changes, but it was less smooth at low revs. We also tried the uprated sound system, which is pretty good and controllable using the click wheel. One attraction of the previous R1200 RT is that it's very comfortable and well equipped without being as heavy as bigger, more powerful multi-cylinder tourers. That's even more true of this bike. It's faster and more exciting, its handling is outstandingly light and agile, and it's more refined while still having plenty of character. Inevitably it's expensive, especially as most are sold with many of the optional extras in place. But the way the R1200 RT combines performance, handling ability, comfort and sophisticated features makes it arguably the world's best tourer, and it certainly takes the Boxer engine touring concept to a new level.